To e-bike or not to e-bike? That seems to be a question on people's minds lately, and for me, I was never really into them or even that curious to have one. That was until my bike sponsor Polygon told me they were releasing a full suspension all-mountain e-bike and they wanted to know if I'd like one. So I of course said yes, and the very first thing I did when it arrived was cover it in leaves to present it to all of you. All right, let's uh, let's blow these leaves off and see what we got. Here we go. This is the Mount Bromo N8, a freshly designed e-bike from Polygon. In this video, we'll not only be going over all the pros and cons of this bike, but we'll also be putting it to the test on all sorts of different trails from chunky enduro to flowy jump lines. Alongside that, we'll also get into how this bike ended up changing my view about e-bikes altogether, because now I think everyone should have one. So the very first thing I thought when I got this was it's freaking heavy. So what I wanna do is get it on these scales here, big scale for the bike, little scale for the battery, and see how it stacks up in comparison to other e-bikes because the average is 40 to 70 pounds depending on how big the battery size is. So let's get this on there and see how it does. So 48. 0.6 pounds, so it's actually kind of below the middle average as far as that goes. Let's take the battery off now and see how much that weighs alone because that's gonna probably weigh a lot of that weight or take a lot of that weight, I should say. These are actually super easy to get the battery off. I've seen a lot of them where you need like a key and all sorts of weird stuff. This is literally just a four millimeter Allen wrench. You stick it up in the hole and twist and that pops your battery out. And now we can weigh it. So we'll just stick it on there. And we're around six to seven pounds. So that's quite a bit of that weight on the bike. Now that we kind of know that it's it's pretty good on weight as far as e-bikes go, let's uh, dive into the specs on this thing and we can show you what all the components it comes with stock. The Mount Bromo comes in two builds, the N8 and the N7 both of which have Shimano steps, which gives you four customizable power modes. And since this is the N8 build, it features the new Shimano EP8 motor, along with a 504 watt hour battery. Now, I have zero experience with different motor types, so I can't speak to the difference between them, but I will say I have no complaints so far with the EP8. For suspension, it has a 160 millimeter Fox 38 float performance fork and a Fox Float X2 shock, both of which are awesome and a mount Mouthful to say. The group set is Shimano XT featuring a 203 millimeter rotor for plenty of braking power, and it comes equipped with a pair of 2.6 Magic Mary tires, Entity XL2 rims, and Shimano XT hubs. If you want a deeper dive into the specs of this bike, I'll leave a link in the description. But the N8 will run you around 5,999 glorious US dollars. And if you're new to the e-bike world, that may sound high, but actually that price could be considered a budget price as far as e-bikes go. And as far as I see it, the N8 has a damn good spec for the price, but they do offer the N7 build at $43.99, so that's definitely worth checking out if it's more in your price range. Anyway, one of the first places I wanted to take this bike to was the Eureka Mountain Bike Park where we built the Mini Kids Park. It has a super fun flowy trail with tons of berms and a few jumps, so I figured it would be a good place to test its playfulness. playfulness of this e-bike is off the freaking charts. It blew me away. I cannot stress enough how immediately I was able to adjust to this bike from my normal bike. I mean, as soon as I got some momentum, I barely could notice a difference between this bike and the Siskiyou T8. I almost would go as far as to say I felt more comfortable coming in a bit fast with jumps because of the added weight in the air 
kind of made things feel more stable. That's my theory anyway, but not only that, I'm simply not that great of a rider, but I felt really confident zipping down the trails on this thing, and it all just felt like a normal bike, even though I was throwing around 20 more pounds than normal. So after this riding session at Eureka Mountain Bike Park, it got me really curious as to what was going on in this cluster of suspension pivots that was making this thing feel so good. And to find out a bit more, I went to a mountain bike suspension specialist to see if he could provide me with any more insight as to what the point of all of these moving components was because all I knew was it felt especially good. So the idea behind having these uniquely designed linkages is, you know, if this were a true single pivot like an orange bike. This is William. He's the founder and operator here at Trail Labs in Springfield, Missouri, and he knows just about everything there is to know about suspension, and then some. And if you ever need your forks or shocks repaired, send them to these guys, because anytime I've had him help me with my suspension, the bike ends up feeling like a totally different bike in the best way possible. Anyway, before I cut William off, he was about to tell me what the point of all of these pivots was. You know, if this were a true single pivot, like an orange bike, right? which is uh, the shock is attached directly to the swing arm, it's a pretty much it's as bumped. perfect leverage or perfect uh, linear leverage curve as you can get. And you can't you really use a coil shock on those. And you get some, some, in some instances, you get some bad pedal feedback with that sort of design. To counter all of that stuff and to make it a little bit more interesting and um, easier to uh, use different types of aftermarket shocks on, um, and to give you a better, a better sensation or feeling when you're actually riding it, you have all these other links involved with the linkage system. And so in this case, this axle, you know, we're, we're, we're watching where the axle goes when it compresses. You might think that it just goes straight up. You know, this is a 140 bike. Uh, 160. 160? Yeah. So you might think it goes straight up 160 mils mm -hmm. or, you know, at an angle 160 a... mils. You know, it's actually sometimes like an, an arc. You know, it actually this might go one, backwards and then, yeah, and then arc I deflate it. So essentially, all these linkages cause the rear axle to move in a way that, in theory, should be not only great for pedaling, but also perform really well with square-edged hits like big, chunky rock gardens and things that compress the suspension quickly. So we know it feels really awesome with well-groomed, flowy trails, but now I want to put the suspension to the test on some raw, chunky enduro-type stuff. And where better to go than the newly opened Shepherd Mountain Bike Park? It's the first stop on the Big Mountain Enduro Series. So this this place is no joke when it comes to enduro trails. But instead of me riding the bike, I wanted to let someone with much more enduro specific riding experience tell me what they thought of the bike. So I got Dave from Gort Gravity to ride down Powder Keg, a black diamond trail on Shepherd Mountain truly deserving of the trail raid. That seemed to be Dave's mantra after each ride. And that's because the Mount Bromo short geometry makes for a much more playful ride down trails than most bikes in the e-bike category. And after getting down Powder Keg, there was a spot on the climbing trail with a really techy rock feature Dave said he'd been eyeing up for some time now and he wanted to try it. <laughs> How'd that feel? Fun. <laughs> I've been wanting to hit that for a year, year and a half. I've been looking at that line when I was building this trail. Well, Beautiful. <laughs> that made my day. I can go home now. So, techie stuff, it clearly does really well, and for a short bike, it's still super fun on the most chunky of trails. I will say, Dave told me he would favor a longer bike for these high-level enduro trails, but for a trail bike... Oh, it's awesome. Even for a bike that was maybe a size too small for me, since I'm a big dude, it rocked the house. 
Made it down double black diamonds. Can't argue with that. And there you have it. This bike is absolutely perfect and there is nothing to be changed. <laughs> no, no, I don't want to just say this bike is incredible all around. I want to give you guys an honest take on everything. So here are some of the cons I found with this bike. Con number one, this is the case with all of the Polygon bikes for me, but my butt does not like these entity seats. I pretty much swapped them out immediately. Con number two, I love the Magic Mary up in front, but since this bike is much more of a trail bike than a pure enduro bike, I think it could go with a little less aggressive tire in the back. And not only that, but the Magic Marys throw rocks like nobody's business. <laughs> and con number three is with this many pivot points on a bike, cleaning and maintenance take a bit more time. And you need to also keep an eye on all the bolts to make sure everything stays where it's supposed to because on these e-bikes, they're heavy and things can get moved around a lot more than normal. But other than those things, I honestly feel like this bike is perfect for my sort of riding style. I love the Siskiyou T8 and it feels almost identical to that bike just with a bit more weight. Anyway, for me, it's essentially a 10 out of 10. I highly recommend this bike. If you're on the market for a playful e-bike, Polygon absolutely killed it with this one. I'll put a link in the description to where you guys can pre-order them. And if you act fast before they sell out, you stand a chance to get one of these this summer, which if you've been bike shopping lately, is really rare to find. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, and I will see you next time on the Primal Trail.